Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to provide a demonstration of path analysis with latent variables using the Stata command language. Now the figure that you see on your screen was actually drawn out using the graphical user interface in Stata and it's quite easy to use however it can become somewhat unwieldy when you have uh, very complex models that you want to test and you have a lot of variables and paths going everywhere so having a good idea about uh, the use of uh, the state of commands can be helpful in terms of uh, making your life easier when you're testing more complex models but anyway this model that you see right here this is actually coming from example 7 in the Stata users guide and you'll notice that we have in this model we have three latent variables we have SES uh, alien 67 and alien 71 and there are two indicators associated with each of those latent variables we have anomia 67 and powerlessness 67 indicating alien 67 we have eduk 66 and this occupational status 66 serving as indicators of SES and then we have anomia 71 and powerlessness 71 serving as indicators of alien 71 and by the way alien is just short for alienation now as I mentioned before uh, this example is associated with example 9 from the Stata Structural Equation Modeling Reference Manual. Uh, it's on release number 16. I'm still on 14, but the commands will be exactly the same. Uh, this is where you can find a copy of the manual, and I will include that link underneath the video description. And you're going to need that anyway in order to uh, obtain the data if you want to follow along, because the data is linked up inside of this PDF. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, scroll down. So let's just say, for instance, that you've you've opened up the Stata Reference Manual. We, you can kind of scroll down and go to Example 9. It says Structural Model with Measurement Component. So I'll click on that, and it'll take us to that particular uh, example. And let me just kind of increase the size here. Um, so I will highlight this area right here it says use HTTPS and it's linked up to the data set so I'm going to copy that and then open up the Stata program and in the command line I'm going to paste that in and hit enter and so now you can see on the right uh, we have the variables all showing up so the data set has been imported into Stata Next, I'm going to go ahead and open up the do file editor so that I can begin uh, typing in the syntax for my model. So the do file editor uh, can be accessed through this little icon right here. And so I'll go ahead and click on that and open up a blank uh, file. And uh, now we can type in our syntax related to the model. Now, in the interest of time, what I'm going to do, I've actually already written the script, so I'm going to paste it in here, and then I'm just going to go ahead and talk through it so you understand what the components are. So first off, you'll see that we have SEM, and so that's the command that we're working from, and then you see the model specified. So there are a couple of uh, components to this model. If we go back to our diagram, you can see uh, first off, uh, where we have SES being indicated by EDUC 66 in this occupational status, uh, and then Powerlessness 67 and Anomia 67 serving as indicators of Alien 67, and then we have Anomia 71 and Powerlessness 71 serving as indicators of Alien 71. That is the measurement portion of our model. Uh, so we need to specify the measurement portion of our model and then the paths that you see running from SES to Alien 67 and to Alien 71 and then from Alien 67 to Alien 71 that represents the structural portion of the model so we have to specify that as well so as we go back to our syntax you'll see uh, we're going to talk through the measurement and structural portions of the model so first off in the first set of parentheses you'll see that we have the two indicator variables of alien 67 right here so we have the anomia 67 and powerlessness 67 both of those are observed variables in the data set we have an arrow uh, which is just a, a less than sign followed by a hyphen drawn from alien 67 to those indicator variables right there 
So that's one part of the structural model. Then we have anomia 71 and powerlessness 71 uh, serving as indicators right here. And then we have the arrow drawn from alien 71 to those indicators. And then finally we have the, in, in the next parenthesis, we have EDUC 66 and occupational status 66 with an arrow drawn from SES, um, the uh, uh, socioeconomic status. So that represents the measurement portion of the model. I also want to uh, point out that these three lines right here, these three forward slashes, this is to continue the commands on to the next line. So basically it allows us to wrap our commands across lines um, so that uh, we don't run off the page as we're putting in our syntax. So you'll notice that all three of those are uh, green and you'll notice too there is a space between uh, that uh, last uh, character in this line and the beginning of those three uh, forward slashes. So make sure that, that that's the case when you are uh, spelling out your, um, your model. Okay, this uh, next portion right here you'll see that we have alien 71 uh, which is serving as an endogenous variable in relation to Alien 67 and SES. So in other words, Alien 71 is being predicted by Alien 67 and SES. So that's part of our structural model. And then we have Alien 67 with an arrow from SES. And so that's the next portion of our structural model right there. You'll notice that at the end of the line, I include a comma. And then theoretically, if we weren't wrapping around, we would have this portion on that same line. But again, I've added in uh, these three forward slashes so that I can continue to wrap the code around onto the next line. And it is this is basically specifying a latent option. And inside, this is just identifying which variables uh, in the code above are latent variables. Now, in example nine, they don't actually include this option. Um, however, this is very useful to have, particularly in those cases where you have uh, observed variables in your data set where you have um, names that uh, have a capital first letter. So uh, Stata will confuse um, you know, which variables in your data set are uh, observed and uh, latent uh, if you're not careful. So this is just my uh, uh, easy fix to make sure that we wouldn't have that problem. We actually don't have that problem with this data set because all of the uh, variable names have uh, the first character is in lowercase. So uh, Stata automatically will recognize those as um, observed variables. But nevertheless, this is just in real practice, uh, this is a good thing to do anyway. So just adding in latent, that's an option, and then followed by inside the parenthesis, uh, the names of our uh, factor variables. Okay, so now we're gonna generate our results. I'm gonna highlight all of this and click on execute selection for the do file. And you can see now we have our results. Uh, that are given so we can kind of click through. So you can see we have this table uh, that contains unstandardized coefficients. Uh, in the measurement portion we have the unstandardized factor loadings along with significance tests for those loadings and in the structural portion we have uh, the unstandardized uh, path coefficients along with their significance tests. Now I'm not going to spend any time unpacking each and every aspect of this. What I'm going to do is include a link underneath the video description to a PowerPoint that uh, kind of unpacks uh, the different uh, pieces of output that we are generating. So if you want more information just be sure to download that PowerPoint. Okay now I'm going to uh, request some post estimation commands and just in, again in the interest of time I'm going to paste in some of the code that I've already written. Uh, really quickly uh, the line the lines in green are comment lines uh, they begin with an asterisk right here and so anything after uh, that asterisk is going to be read as a comment um, and so we have different uh, uh, functions or post estimation commands that are given uh, following. So you can see first off I'm going to generate the overall goodness of fit statistics for our model by using the eStat GOF uh, 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 post estimation command. So uh, the GOF refers to um, goodness of fit and then you can see I've got a comma and then stats and then inside parenthesis I typed all. So uh, to quickly look at that output, I'm going to highlight this. Uh, I don't have to highlight the 
comment line, but I'll just show you that it doesn't do anything um, in terms of our output. So you can see right here that now in our output we've got our goodness of fit statistics. You can see we have the likelihood ratio chi-square and there's our p-value that's given right there. There's the RMSEA uh, along with our p-close test. We have our CFI and TLI that's given down here and then we have our standardized root mean squared residual that's given right here. Again I talk uh, more in depth about these in uh, the PowerPoint. And so next we have, uh, we're going to generate equation level goodness of fit. And we can do that by typing in ESTAT, then our space, then EQGOF. So when I highlight this and run it, uh, you can see that now I've got my equation level goodness of fit. Just really briefly as we're looking at this right here, uh, the R squared values um, for uh, this portion right here, these are our indicator variables associated with the latent variables. These R squared values. Uh, are interpreted as commonalities and then down here uh, these R squared values are referring to uh, the proportion of variation in our endogenous latent variables that's accounted for by uh, their respective predictors. So just remember that we had SES was predicting Alien 67 and Alien 71 and then we had uh, also Alien 67 predicting Alien 71. So basically uh, this right here would be the proportion of variation accounted for in Alien 67 by SES and then this R square right here would represent the proportion of variation in Alien 71 accounted for by both SES and Alien 67. The uh, next portion of our uh, syntax you can see right here I've got ESTAT M-I-N-D-I-C-E-S or uh, mendices if you will. So if we we can use this to generate modification indices in case you want to uh, potentially um, add additional parameters to improve uh, the fit of your model. Just uh, it's really important to keep in mind that these are just empirically based uh, suggestions if you will and so this does not mean make every change uh, that is recommended. You need to be you know using these sparingly and uh, hopefully consistent with uh, theory. So be choosy in any kind of modifications that you make based on recommendations from this, um, this output. So I'm going to click on execute selection do right there. And so now you can see that we have our table of modification indices. So the MI column right there, that's for modification index. Basically, uh, the, the values that are given are uh, treated as chi-square values and so uh, any value that's above say 3.8 um, uh, 4 would be uh, considered a candidate parameter for inclusion. So once again uh, if you have a, a recommended parameter with a, a modification index value greater than 3.84 that would be a candidate for inclusion. So you can see that all of the modification indices that are shown in here uh, would meet uh, that particular threshold. So um, again you don't want to just kind of pick uh, every single one of these to include in a respecified model but you want to be choosy and just keep in mind that up here these are uh, the uh, recommendations in relation to the measurement portion so these are all uh, possible ad additional factor loadings you could add and then down here you've got uh, added error covariances that are largely uh, provided here so what I will do in a second is I will just go ahead and, for the purpose of demonstration add in uh, an error covariance between Anomia 67 and Anomia 71 so reflected right here and then also between uh, powerlessness 67 and 71 reflected right here. Okay, then uh, finally, if you want standardized estimates, it's very easy to do. You can just type in SEM comma and then standardized uh, after you've you know run your model, and now you can see that we get our standardized estimates. So up here in in this table, you can see it says standardized. So basically, then. Uh, you would have standardized uh, factor loadings in the measurement portion and standardized path coefficients in the structural portion. 
And I don't think I mentioned this earlier, so I'm going to go back just to the un, the unstandardized coefficients. Really quickly, uh, by default in the measurement portion, uh, you'll notice that uh, one of the indicators associated with each of those factors is uh, has a factor loading that is fixed to 1. And that was done using uh, the defaults um, that are given in Stata. But this is a, a fairly conventional way that is utilized to set the measurement scale for the latent factors. So uh, oftentimes we use a reference indicator to uh, set the scale of the latent factor. So the uh, one factor loading associated with each factor would be fixed to one. So you can see right here it says constrained. Um, and so as a result there are no significance tests that are given. Okay, so I mentioned about the modification indices, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, just create a little bit additional code uh, right here. I'm going to paste it in because I've again I've already written it and we're going to add in the those two error covariances. So you'll notice that all of this code up to this point uh, is the same as what we had above and then on the next line again you'll see we have a comma right here then uh, we have three forward slashes there needs to be a space between those two if you're gonna continue the line and wrap it around um, on the next line right here I've got COV for covariance and inside parenthesis we have E dot anomia 67 so that's referring to the error variance associated with anomia 67 then we have an asterisk and then we have E dot anomia 71 and again that's referring to an error variance in this case for anomia 71 so that's inside the first parenthesis on this line then we have cove again and inside the parenthesis we have E dot that's for the powerlessness variable for 67 then we have an asterisk and then we have uh, E powerlessness for uh, 71 right there so now we've specified in this line right here two error covariances, you know, which is consistent with what we saw with the modification indices in terms of their recommendations. Um, now you'll see that we have a comma that's given right here, a space, and again, we're going to wrap this line around again with three forward slashes, and then we're going to add in the latent uh, option that's given right there. And inside parenthesis, we have alien 67, alien 71, and SES that's given right there inside our parenthesis. So if I highlight all of this and click uh, the execute selection, uh, you'll notice that there is an error. And uh, the reason why is because uh, we should not actually have a comma that's given right there. Um, so sorry about that. So we'll highlight this now again and we will click on the run. And so now you can see the analysis uh, has been performed. So basically, uh, you can consider the covariates or uh, covariance uh, right here. These are uh, options, and also the latent option that's given right here. So there should not have been a um, a comma uh, at this point that I was that I had included previously. So um, at any rate, that is the basic uh, analysis. You can see that you can still use your eStat commands and so forth in order to generate additional output related to this particular model. Okay, so that uh, pretty well concludes this video demonstration, and I appreciate you watching.